So we are finally back to Twincat. Let's see how we can simulate that water tank here. In order to do that, I have the FP process. It's a function block that calls the FP control transfer function underscore one function block from back off. Here, I have some internal variables that I'm going to be using to parameterize and make this um, instance functional. So during the first cycle of the function block, I have this uh, if statement here going on. So here we're gonna set up our uh, transfer function parameters, as well as our cycle time and task time, the order of the transfer function, the E mode, and then these other parameters here. Then after that, what we're gonna do is call the transfer function and we're passing one input, which is the input of the function block, the E mode, the parameters, and the output of the transfer function, we're gonna output from the function block. Moving forward, now I have FB MATLAB controller. This is the code that was generated from MATLAB. And all I've done was to paste that code here and as you can see, it has three inputs, method, the set point, and the process variable, the feedback. This is the output of the controller. I'm not gonna spend any time here. We already saw how that works. Now we're gonna simulate everything together. And in order to do that here in my main, I'm gonna create an instance of FB process it's FB water tank. Once again, this is going to be simulated at water tank dynamics. Then I have FB PID, which is going to be the instance of my controller. Uh, I have a set point. I have a variable to accumulate the control action. I have a variable to store the water tank height. And finally, just a bit so I can trigger everything together. So if I go online here, I can force this variable, but before I do that, let's make sure we're recording data. Yeah, by the way, I have this Twinket measurement project here, and here I'm charting the water tank, the set point, and the control action. So it's already recording. And uh, let's go back to the main and force this bit. And as you can see, here we have the water tank height that converges to the set point in a very large amount of time. But remember, the reason why we've done that is because we didn't want any overshoot. So this is a very, very slow controller, but eliminated completely the overshoot. This is the action of the PID. So initially you have a higher flow and as you approach the set point, that flow uh, decreases and at some point reaches uh, some sort of equilibrium. So at this point here, the amount of water that's getting inside the tank is exactly the same amount of water that's leaving the tank. Okay, so back to Twincat. Now we're gonna see how to accomplish the same thing using uh, backup controller. This function block here is using the FP control PID which is part of the TC2 controller toolbox. As inputs, we have the set point and our process variable, and this is the output of the controller. Then we have some internal variables here. We have an instance of this FP control PID. We have an instance of this structure here that we're gonna use to pass the parameters to PID. We have the control mode, which is set to active and uh, this boolean um, b, b init that we're gonna use to populate the parameters during the first cycle of this function block. Uh, so here we have the code. So like I said, if b init is true, we're gonna execute 
this stuff here inside this if statement and by the very end we're going to set it to false so this is only going to happen during the first cycle of this function block this is how backup implements the PID. So it implements the PID in terms of KP, the derivative time, sorry, the integral time, the derivative time, and the damping time. So we're gonna need to convert our gains, our derivative gain to derivative time, and our integral time to, and our integral uh, gain to integral time. TDS is the dumping time. TDS is the bow of a filter that we implement on the derivative component of the controller. And we do that to create a little bit of stability. As you may know from your classic theory control classes, it's not good to have a pure zero. A transfer function that has a zero and no poles is very unstable, so we add uh, TTS here to make this a little bit more stable. So our control time is 10. And this task is 10 milliseconds. Then I have my KP coming straight from MATLAB. And then I converted my KI to integral time and I use this little formula here. It's pretty straightforward. Same thing for derivative time. In my case is gonna be zero. You cannot implement negative derivative times. So keep an eye for that. And then finally my damping time as well as my input and output limits. So outside of this parameterization all I'm doing is calling the PID controller. So let's deploy this real quick. So I'm recording, reading zero. Online. Now I'm calling FBPID2, which is an instance of this uh, back off controller function block that I just showed you guys. So now I'm going to trigger this. And as you can see, the response of this PID has a very similar response to the MATLAB controller PID uh, that we tested. 